Ça fait quelques années que je voyage en van. J'ai commencé avec un petit berlingot. Et puis, il y a deux ans, on est parti à l'aventure avec Charlotte et Johnny Jumper. Je ne vais pas venir te parler de, de quel point la van life, c'est cool, le fait d'être libre, de pouvoir partir où tu veux, quand tu veux. Pour ça, il y a déjà, je pense, beaucoup de vidéos sur YouTube qui en parlent. Non, moi, ce qui m'intéresse vraiment, c'est de parler de la contrepartie de tout ça. Quelque chose dont on parle en fait beaucoup moins souvent. Le fait est que quand tu es en, dans ton van, tu es un peu dans ta petite maison en fait. Tu es un peu dans ta bulle. Tu n'as pas tellement de raison d'aller vers les autres. Et tu n'es pas forcément le plus engageant pour que les gens viennent vers toi. Et quand j'y réfléchis, je me rends compte que depuis tout le temps qu'on voyage, la plupart des gens qu'on a rencontrés, c'est surtout des gens un peu comme nous, des gens qui sont en van. Et en arrivant en Bulgarie, on a décidé de remédier à ça. Et c'est comme ça qu'on s'est inscrit sur la plateforme Helpix. Alors Helpix, si tu connais pas, c'est un peu comme Woofing. C'est un site qui met en relation des voyageurs du monde entier avec des gens qui ont juste besoin d'un coup de main. En échange du fait d'être logé et nourri. Ça peut être un centre équestre, une ferme bio ou juste des gens qui vivent un peu différemment et qui veulent partager leur mode de vie avec d'autres personnes. Et c'est comme ça qu'on est rentré en contact avec cette famille de Hollandais qui a décidé de tout quitter pour s'installer en Bulgarie dans une yurte. Alors, laisse-moi te présenter Suzanne, Rutmer, Tel, Rix et Paula. On a partagé leur quotidien pendant environ une semaine et ça a été pour moi une des expériences les plus marquantes de notre road trip. D'une part parce que ça a un peu cassé la routine de notre voyage, mais surtout parce que j'ai trouvé leur histoire extrêmement inspirante. Comme j'avais envie de la partager et que je suis persuadé que c'est eux qui sont le plus à même de la raconter, j'ai organisé cette petite interview. We, we, we both had a job that we did, really didn't like so much. Mm -hmm. And Rick, our oldest daughter, didn't like it in school. And it came a bit together that we decided, okay, now it's time to leave. I was teaching also, I was struggling a bit for, like, is this what I want? These children looking at me. Uh, I, mean, I try to do nice things with them, mm -hmm. but still, you're, I, I felt stuck in the system and then seeing your own daughter starting in that same system yeah. for so many years to go there. But, and then seeing that she didn't really, really feel comfortable. Selling off the house was difficult, but mm -hmm. then when it was sold, It was like also like a yeah, it felt yes, nice so like a relief. When we made the yeah. decision, it was not difficult anymore. No. I, I didn't find because a lot of people tell you like they tell you, oh, it's a security. You have a job and you have mm -hmm. a house, and it's all yeah. like what you're supposed to have. Yeah. And yeah. then they don't understand why you don't yeah. want to have it anymore. <laughs> yep. You know, this is everything you want in life, and that's what they want in life at least. Yeah. Yeah. But um, we lived in the city, and we both had a full-time job, and the kids had to go to daycare and school. And then you know you have to pay hard. You work hard for your for your house and for the daycare and for the expensive food. And it's like you live for money all the time. You know, it's like uh, and yeah. um, well, we decided we want to spend more time with the kids. Mm -hmm. We think it's important in life to have quality time together. Mm -hmm. So that's what we decided. Okay, this is not what we wanted. First, we traveled for a year to, to find out what we really wanted. Didn't know so much, and we, we, we visited um, a family who lived alone on a mountain and some eco villages and other places around the world. Mm. Yeah. Really, the plan to travel in the beginning, but then we we sold our house for a good price, and then we thought, oh, why not? I mean, <laughs> it's possible now, and and we don't really know yet where where to go. First, we traveled for half a year with uh, in with just a few suitcases, you know, like that was it. A little bag of toys for the kids, for ourselves some clothes and a few books and that was it. We don't need yeah. a big house and we don't need, so we, that's why we are so happy on New York now I think also because it's And also we needed to, to be, stay flexible, we didn't really think about that before we left I think. No, that's But true. When we traveled we thought we don't want to be that Um, stuck in one place or not stuck is negative but like fixed in one place that you have to buy land and then if mm. you want to leave you have to sell it and so yeah so that we can just still, go still feels free and you still feel yeah. free that you can think oh this is our life changed so we need something else we can, mm. and you can just go yeah you have much more time for them now Rutmer worked five days a week and I can see that their bonding especially with the boys is much stronger than mm. when than when we lived in uh, in Rotterdam yeah. living in a city and if you if you look too much uh, as a different person then people look at you And mm. when you're a, a different person in nature, then <laughs> yeah. it's okay. When you, yeah. I don't know, when you don't brush your hair or look a bit wilder or whatever, that's not, not really a problem. So yeah. I feel, f I f it feels more free for me to yeah. live here. Mm. So yeah. maybe not to be, I, I didn't feel judged in the city. It's, it's not that I felt bad or something, but now it feels more relaxed. I mean, it doesn't, I'm just yeah. here in between the trees. And 
yeah, in the city life is more about earning money and what you're gonna do with that. But here it's more like a shortcut, you know. You don't need the money because you get the berries for the, from the tree for free yeah. and uh, clean airs for free. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I appreciate the quality of the simple life too, you know, just collecting wood from the forest or getting mm. water from the well. And you choose this life for your children. They say, well, how can you choose this life for your children? But it's like what adults. I mean, we try to involve them in the decisions, yeah. but it's, I mean, if you live in the city, it's also, you, you, you choose know. for them. Yeah. Yeah, but it's mm. a more common so, choice, so people don't ask yeah. questions about yeah. that. Yeah. So. It was already about, also about the children, a big thing, but I think it's become more even, <laughs> that it's only about the children. Yeah. That no, for the, because for some reason now it feels so much more, makes so much more sense to, to be with the children all the time. That 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 the main thing that became yeah. the main thing. It's so good for children to, that that they also see that that you're not um, that you're just free to to explore and to find out and and that's easier if you if you don't go to school. I think yeah. because in a school you 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 get many things that are told to you as a kid and yeah and you and that's difficult when you're an adult to let go of all those things. Um, I think in general we're all pretty happy. In yeah. For now, and I think the most important thing is that, that you know that when you're not happy anymore, you can change it. In, in the Western European society, we have so much luxury. You can just step out, see for three months, half a year, a year. Uh, just do it, you know, quit your job, sell everything. And if you don't like it, you can just move back to France or Holland and rent a new house, find a new job. It's, it's all, you know, that's the worst case, you know, you could just say, okay, this is not nothing for me, living in nature, I could understand that, or I miss my parents a lot, you know, but then you can just go back, and it's not like it's the 1930s and you cannot find a job anymore and you, you go dead because you're too hungry, it's, <laughs> it's changed, you know, maybe it takes half a year to find a job, but then you still get your maybe social insurer, you know, or your family to help, or really, it's worst case, you have to go back to your old life and then you learn the experience. You know? yeah. And yeah, and that's a good case. Yeah, yeah, I, I would just, like I said, I would always yeah. do it. Because you never regret the things you, what they, what they say, the famous thing, you never regret the things that you did do, but the things you didn't do. Mm. Yeah. So it's always good to do, and even if you fail, then you fail. Voilà, maintenant toi aussi tu as fait la connaissance de Suzanne Rettmer. J'espère que cette rencontre t'aura inspiré tout autant qu'elle nous a inspiré nous. Dans la description, je te mets l'Instagram, le, leur Instagram. N'hésite pas à dire ce que tu as pensé de leur, de leur mode de vie et de cette vidéo dans les commentaires et à mettre un pouce si ça t'a plu. Et je te dis à bientôt pour de nouvelles, nouvelles vidéos. Salut